It's the last weekend of April of 2023, and I wanted to come out to record a video covering my gear for NRL 22 because we are kicking off a new season. The NRL 22 2023-2024 season starts off in the month of May. I did make a change to my gear, and uh, so I wanted to cover it and just do it kind of basically an overall summary of what I run for NRL 22. If you want to know what I was running last season, I will put a link to the video in the video description. But let's go ahead and get into the meat of it. My rifle for this upcoming season will be this Voodoo 360. This is relatively new. This uh, action and the barreled action rather is relatively new to me. So it's a Voodoo 360. However, the barrel is not a factory barrel as shipped by Voodoo because Voodoo has, you know, they obviously make their own rifles and they make their own barreled actions. But I got this Voodoo 360 by way of DI Precision out in Texas. And what sits on here as a Muller Works 25 inch barrel. It's a 1 in 13 twist, not your typical 1 in 16, and it is a 1.250. So that's 1 and a quarter inch contour straight to the muzzle. No threads, uh, so I'm not running any tuners or anything, but that's what I'm running for the barreled action. The uh, stock that it sits in is a Masterpiece Arms Pro, Matrix Pro chassis rather. This Matrix Pro chassis is not new to me. I've had this since last season, so um, my Voodoo Gen 1.2 was sitting in this. As far as the trigger is concerned, we are running a Trigger Tech Diamond Single Stage. I think I have this one set to about, uh, say 11 or 12 ounces. So it's under a pound, but definitely over half a pound. The scope that I'm running on this is my ZC, my ZCO, so Zero Compromise Optic, ZC527. This is the Impact 3 reticle. Last season, I was running my Impact 3X, but that's still on my Gen 1.2, my Voodoo Gen 1.2, and I'm this, this is my first zero compromise, and this is kind of like my floater scope because I had bought two zero compromise optics with the intent of having two Voodoos, and it took me a while to get the second Voodoo, but so now I have this zero compromise ZC527 Impact 3 sitting on the Voodoo 360. It sits in a weed air mount. It's spelled A-U-D-E-R-E. This weed air mount I got for free actually through MK Machining because that's where I bought the scope from and it was in, it was bundled with the scope at the time as part of a deal. I believe it is, it's about 1.5 inches bore, uh, height over bore I guess for the center line of the scope and it is a 20 MOA cant. I wanna make sure that I'll note that I do have a 40 MOA cant scope rail. So that's 60 total overall and I have to double check what i have here as far as available elevation but it should be upwards of 33.4 33.4 mils of elevation available out of the 35 on this scope so i can use this for quote unquote extreme long range from fire shooting so with a 50 yard zero 50 yard zero and i still have 33.4 mils of elevation available uh anything else to cover here bipod Running the Skypod, same as last season, MTT Skypod, the Gen 2. This is a standard single pull. Uh, really big fan of the Skypods for this style of shooting. And as far as the other things on this gun, uh, the only thing I'll, I'll also mention here, uh, just keep in mind this gun is unloaded. Let's go ahead and swing this gun around here on this tripod. If you can see on the other side of the rifle, we have a timer, which is part, this is just a timer that you can get off Amazon and Masterpiece Arms made a little attachment that you can put it on there on the chassis, which I don't really use, but I still keep it on there. And then I have my Coltac dope card holder. I think they call it the cheat sheet or whatever. It's a really nice, simple way to hold a vinyl card holder for your dope. And I put my dope there. So on the weeder mount, I do have this pick rail here. So there's no reason, rhyme or reason for this pick rail here. I was going to put it on the side here because I want to mount my send it level here. Unfortunately, this is too large. I can still put it there, but it's just going to be kind of in the way. So I'm waiting for a smaller version, which is kind of back ordered. But I will have that on the side here as on the, so I can mount the send it level vertical. If you want to know what the send it level looks like, I do have reviews of that. And I also ran one on my NRL 22 rig last season. It's basically an electronic level. And before I forget one other thing, everyone always asks, what's the, this cover on the scope? This is a Scope Chaps scope cover, scopechaps.com. Check them out. They're just basically a Cordura, Cordura 
you know, fabric wrap that you put over your scope body. And then I'm running MK machining scope caps for those interested. I think that's everything to cover on here. I do have weights on the front end of the Matrix Pro. Overall weight of this rifle right now without the bipod is 22 pounds, one ounce. I don't recall what the bipod weighs, but that gives you an idea. It's balanced very well. Uh, finally, you have it balanced very well because I could never get it balanced well with my Gen 1, my Voodoo Gen 1 with the 20 inch MTU barrel. So, sorry, got a little cable here. Um, so it balances, it's front heavy, which is what I prefer. <laughs> I want a little bit front heavy uh, without the bipod. So without the bipod, it's still barely front heavy, but with the bipod, it is front heavy. The reason I want it front heavy is because it's gonna be easier to control on barricades. And plus, depending on how far you gotta push the gun on the barricade, it may balance differently. So right here, balances very front heavy, forward of the magwell, but back here, probably where you it will sit with most bags, this is pretty balanced red about this point. So I am very happy with the way this gun balances right now. Even though it is a heavy beast, uh, it balances very well. The ammo that I'll be running this season is still going to be Lapua Center X. This barreled action is very lot tolerant with Center X. I, it's eaten and shot every single lot of Center X that I have on hand without any real issues. It shoots it either spectacularly or very respectably. I've also had good luck with Lapua Super Long Range. Long range shoots okay, but Lapua Super Long Range shoots great. I've shot a 0.9 inch group at 200 yards without issue, so very good there. As far as the bags are concerned, my primary bag is still the Armageddon Gear slash Razor Precision Game Changer Schmedium bag with Get Light Fill. This weighs very light. I can't remember what it weighed before. It was like around nine pounds, 10 pounds, but right now it's under two pounds. So it's a very nice bag and it doesn't take up too much weight. My secondary bag is this Coltac D bag. This is by Coltac and it's attached to a Area 419 Rail Changer plate and you know they call these gamer plates sometimes but i like this put it, it's a you know chassis or rail mounted bag and it's very good for the ladder stages i love this for ladder stages it keeps it's, it keeps a thinner profile than having to run a razor precision game changer bag or armageddon gear game changer bag in terms of getting it to a small or very tight porthole type thing situation so definitely like this bag uh, a third bag that i may use which i don't have with me today actually is my we bad pump pillow it's very it's a pump pillow is just basically a little bit little bit larger maybe you know yeah significantly larger than a volleyball but it's relatively large and you can use it to fill dead space if you're trying to shoot a stage of fire where you don't really have elbow support and i'll use that to fill up dead space for my you know between my shooting elbow and my body or the barricade itself a few supplementary items i want to mention i still run this blue alpha gear battle belt gun belt type deal it's a two-part belt where you have a kind of the inner belt with loop on one side and then there's hook on the other side of this outer belt. Basically you just put it around the belt and you clip it with this cobra buckle and I have this nice belt around me. It houses my Kestrel. I have my Kestrel 57 and Elite, which I run for my ballistics solver. And then I also have a Sig Kilo 8K laser rangefinder, which I have on my pouch here. And then I have a couple of pouches here for my magazines and don't have any mags in here. I have one I have one polymer mag here but I keep two mags on me on this on my pow or my my belt for kind of just uh emergency or whatever or if I need a second mag on that stage of fire and then I usually keep my primary mag in my other pocket my backpack or in my hand when I'm getting ready for that stage. Uh really happy with this setup it keeps things really handy for me. And as far as the mags are concerned, I am running primarily the billet mags, the original 10 round billet mags that Voodoo came out with. I know they, this year they are supposed to come out with some new billet mags, but those have yet to be released. But I'm very happy with the billet mags that I do run because they, they function great in my, my existing Voodoos. As far as the spotting stuff, I didn't bring my Swarovski NL Pures for some reason. I didn't bring them today, but I do run my Swarovski NL Pure 12x42s. However, I find myself using primarily the Sig Kilo 6K, which is an 8X, my NL Pures are a 12X magnification. I figure 8X at short range, 100 yards, it's a lot better. I can usually fit both like two banks of targets in the 8X field of view. So for those of you who are looking for binos for like short range spotting, might want to consider a 10X or um, more of an 8X rather. 
Uh, my 12Xs and LPRs are about equivalent to, to most 10Xs, but I think an 8X is gonna be a little bit better with a wider field of view. And then my shot timer of choice as a match director and for practice is the Kestrel KST-1000. Uh, this is a really rugged shot timer, if anything. I, I'm still tinkering around with the sensitivity because sometimes it still doesn't pick up rimfire, especially with a long barrel rimfire. You need to get it really close to the muzzle. But uh, I really do like this because the fact that I can drop it and it's waterproof and it won't, you know, it'll still be running uh, when I need it. In any case, that is my sort of setup for NRL 22. If you have any questions about the gear that I'm running, or if you have questions about the gear that you would like to try out, definitely uh, put a comment in the video to, in the video, and I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. You can also reach out to me directly on social media or email, and I'll try to help you out. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully I can see you at the range, especially if you're in SoCal. Come out to one of our matches at the West End Gun Club.